Welcome to this module. Now we're going to talk in this module about information security governance building blocks. Building blocks. And we're going to try to simplify the entire information security uh, governance paradigm and break it into pieces which are more logical and which have a slightly better sequence. So let's have a look at the information security governance building blocks. Now, at a very initial level, when the organization starts to implement layer four or stage four, which is information security governance, there's obviously the policy. And we've already talked about, you know, having a very, very minimal policy, a light policy, a very brief high level policy, right at the beginning of the information security transfer transformation project, uh, so that we are at least regulated by a constitution and that document is there. Uh, most organizations usually have a document, but you know you should start off with a more practical uh, document based on the experience of either the consultant or the security head. So the policy is the constitution, and that is more practical when the controls have already been implemented in stages one, two, and three, and then you have stage four. And then there is responsibility. Who is responsible for implementing security? Who has the authority? And who is this going to be delegated to uh, within the organization? Who is going to drive this? And what is the authority that those entities have? Is it a department? Is it a person? Is it a team? Is it a committee? And then you have resourcing and prioritization. So the leadership of the organization, executive management, has to prioritize because there's so many activities going on in the organization. If you want a meaningful, effective information security transformation program, then you need to allocate resources and prioritize this, uh, which is also tone at the top. And then there's periodic review. So it's very easy to start an initiative, but if the leadership does not consistently review the performance and the results of the initiative, the information security transformation project, then the chances are that a new priority will come up and it will sway, uh, you know, the entire organization will sway in that direction and uh, we will lose the momentum and uh, the implementation will, will not be effective. Now, the second or the intermediate governance building blocks, which is the second, you know, step really, is, or the second phase in information security governance, is you have, first of all, change management. So now you've started to implement the controls or the controls have already been identified. So now we need a mature change management process because we are trying to make the responses of information technology and the outcomes, we are trying to make them predictable. So we're going to control change and change management is a complete process. And then there's SOPs, which is Standard Operating Procedures, because we're going to be making checklists and people need to document what are the core and important activities that they need to perform so that when there's a new hire or when a critical activity needs to be done, then it's documented and there's a checklist and there's a SOP available and everybody follows the same process. And there's a minimal chance that people will either forget or uh, something will be left out by omission. And then there's awareness. Um, because these programs are being implemented, change management is being done, there are different SOPs being developed, there are mechanisms being documented, how to do certain activities. So you need to make the organization aware about the information security transformation project and the consequences of what could happen if uh, the responsibilities of information security are not conducted or not taken up by the different IT resources. And then there's monitoring of metrics, uh, monitoring of performance, uh, evaluating the results of the information security management system. And we need to start doing that. We need to see what are the, uh, you know, how many systems have the antivirus updated. We need to see that how many vulnerabilities we have, for example, and we need to measure and monitor these activities. And then the mature or the final governance building blocks, which is the third phase, is that now we need to have these three fundamental core activities, governance activities, well in place, well embedded in the organization. There's risk management, and all the activities need to be looked at and evaluated and processed from a risk lens or a risk spectacle or a risk perspective and, and from, from a risk life cycle perspective. 
And then there's uh, incident management. So incident management, whenever there's an incident, the root cause analysis is conducted, and we try to see why did an incident happen, uh, what was the root cause, what are the corrective actions, and we link it up with risk management, and then we could incorporate checking for that in the rest of the organization because the same lapse or absence of a control may be in other parts of the organization, and you do that through internal audit. So internal audit is really going out and having a scope of audit and making sure that the um, organization is complying to the policy and to the controls and to the checklists. So these are the mature governance building blocks, and this is what becomes important once the governance is fully maturely implemented in an organization. And then there's an ongoing activity because this keeps happening. Security, you know, is it's a journey. Security is a journey. It's not a destination. So there's continual improvement, um, and you have to do assessments, gap analysis, third-party analysis, penetration test, even internal audits, and then you take corrective actions. And governance implementation should be broken up into phases, like we've broken up into phase one, two, three. Um, a starting, you know, steps, intermediate steps, and mature steps. And finally, continual improvement. Gradually progress with activities that match organizational readiness and maturity, because the organization can only capture and effectively absorb activities of governance which match with its maturity level and its ability to incorporate that level of complexity or that level of, uh, of, uh, of process um, and, and its appetite will gradually increase for, for governance and it won't happen overnight. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.